Welcome to a proof of the derivative of f of x equals arc sine x. We'll prove the derivative of arc sine x with respect to x equals one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus x squared. So to begin our proof, we'll let y equal arc sine x. So notice in this equation, x would be the sine function value and y would be the angle. And therefore it follows that we can rewrite this equation as sine y equals x, where y the angle would be on the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. For our next step, let's model angle y using a right triangle, where if we have sine y equals x, or if we want x over one, since sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse of any right triangle, we can label the opposite side x and the hypotenuse one. So again, this is our angle y, and because sine y is equal to x, we can label the opposite side x and the hypotenuse one, and therefore using the Pythagorean theorem, we can label the adjacent leg, square root of the quantity, one minus x squared. So using this triangle, we know that sine y is equal to x, and we also know that cosine y, which is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, would be the square root of the quantity, one minus x squared. However, it should be noted that the sine function value can be positive or negative when the angle y is on the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, meaning the angle y would be in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. If the angle's in the first quadrant, then the sine function value would be positive, and if the angle is in the fourth quadrant, the sine function value would be negative. However, the adjacent side of the triangle would always be positive in the first and fourth quadrants because the adjacent side would be the x coordinate on the coordinate plane, which is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. And now for the next step in our proof, we'll use implicit differentiation and differentiate both sides of this equation here with respect to x. So now we have the derivative of sine y with respect to x equals the derivative of x with respect to x. The derivative of sine y with respect to x would be cosine y times dy dx. Again, notice how we have an extra factor of dy dx because of the chain rule. And on the right side, we have the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to one. And now solving for dy dx, we would divide both sides by cosine y. So we have dy dx equals one divided by cosine y. And since we know cosine y is equal to the square root of the quantity one minus x squared, we have dy dx equals one over the square root of the quantity one minus x squared. We could also write one over cosine y as secant y using our reciprocal identity and then referring back to the triangle for secant y we'd have the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side which also gives us one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus x squared. And therefore we have our proof the derivative of arc sine x with respect to x equals one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus x squared. Notice wherever the derivative is defined this value would be positive, which means wherever the derivative function value is defined, the slope of the tangent line would be positive. And let's verify this by looking at the graph of f of x equals arc sine x. So here's the graph of f of x equals arc sine x. Notice how the derivative function value is going to be defined except at one and negative one, but for every value in the domain of the derivative function, the derivative function value would be positive and therefore the slope of the tangent line to the function is positive and the function is increasing. I hope you found this helpful.